So dad, it's almost Mother's Day. So I'm here to ask you, how does motherhood affect the brain? It's just a very exciting time in the life of the brain in the mother. I mean, there are all kinds of hormonal changes. There are physical changes that are occurring in the brain. The brain is actually making all kinds of adjustments in, in uh, you could say, be, being ready for this nurturing period. And then it's gonna be a time of great change that relates to taking care of the child and helping the child in its development and training and educating the child and being a mentor to the child. Pregnancy is a really exciting time, especially a first pregnancy. And I'm wondering how does pregnancy and childbirth affect a woman's brain? So you see all of these physical changes occurring in mom and you don't realize there are changes that are occurring inside the skull as well. The mother is growing attached to the baby before it arrives. And then when it shows up, very special things occur that promote this attachment. They're promoted by the physical connection of the mother to the baby. The mother sees the baby, smells the baby, feels the baby against her, her anterior surfaces, against her breast and, and chest, and hugs the baby, swats, you know. All of this is actually promoting in the brain the release of a neurotransmitter called oxytocin. And oxytocin is actually contributing to the bonding of the mother to the, to the infant. It's, it's, a, it's a sort of chemical assist to something that's gonna occur over the long term. And that's a physical connection in the brain between the, the self creation of the mother. Mother has created a representation of herself in her brain already, early in her own life. And now she's gonna incorporate in that self that physically associate this new precious thing as part of herself. Again, this begins with the promotion of oxytocin, but then the brain actually, through thousands and thousands, ultimately hundreds of thousands of moments of connection between this precious thing and herself, she grows this child into herself. And now they're, in a sense, for the rest of their life, if all goes well, they will be one. They'll be connected in a very special way and uh, for life. So oxytocin is the reason that we get that mama bear lift a car feeling when something happens to our kid. Well, it's past oxytocin because ultimately this is taken over by physical changes that actually bind that child continuously. You know, across the entire life of the child, that, that connection is becoming stronger and stronger and stronger through the reference of the, how important the child is to you, to the person that you are. And this all occurs as a physical process in your brain. How does this work for children who are adopted or raised by someone who didn't give birth to them? Well, How does this bonding process happen in the brain? You have, this, you have this wonderful basis of attachment to anybody that's really important to or, or that, can, that you consistently interact with in a positive or loving way. So you can grow this attachment with a new arrival. You, you don't have the advantages of, the, of this initial heavy pulse of oxytocin that might come from a period of, of breastfeeding or attachment or, or hugging the child. Or, but, but, but still, you have lots of chances for hugs and affection and positive interaction. That will actually, again, grow this attachment. This is a lifelong process. Do the brain changes come from physical contact with the child or emotional? mental, what, what, what kinds of contact are you talking about for brain well, change? Well, they're all neurological. I mean, we talk about emotional con changes, but that basically represents the basis of neurological signaling. Just like physical contact is a basis of neurological signaling, and your brain interprets this as a positive basis of stimulating the release of these agents in your brain, basically, that contribute to the positive attachment. So, as you know, I have a three-year-old and a lot of parents of toddlers complain about having mommy brain, like being extra forgetful or feeling like they're in a fog. What's the deal with that? Is that a real thing? Well, for one thing, uh, it's a time in your brain when, you're, you, when you have this very special and strong attachment to this little one. And it's the most important thing to you. So you can say that it might be a time when you're a little bit neglectful of the other things that you might, you know, because this is number one. You know, you worry about that child more than you'd worry about any other thing in this period in your life. But, but overall, what a wonderful thing it is to have that child in your world. And it's a time of enriched experience. It's a time when all kinds of new challenges and elaboration, things that are really important to you are occurring. So I look upon it as a time for brain excitement. So I know you think that challenges drive positive brain change. 
So it sounds like dealing with kids and all of their challenges that they bring is actually a good thing for your brain. Yeah, and actually those positive brain changes, the fact that it matters to you so much because you're so concerned about this little kid and how they're doing and what's important for them. You know, that's a time of po really substantially amplified brain change. What about when the kids grow up and start to become more independent, maybe move out of the house? What's happening then to the, the mom's brain? Well, let's hope that you've invested enough in your grow growing attachment to your child so that the connection is there strongly for life. And in, 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 in the majority of cases, that, that's the case. I mean, that attachment is, is strong and enduring. And, but do whatever you can across life in, with your child to, to assure that you retain it because it, it comes from brain change that comes from continuous experiential interaction. So try to sustain that connection with your child actively because it's something that you can nourish and even continue to grow. And ultimately, what the, ideally, there will be a wonder, that wonderful codependence that can occur between a child and their parent where the parent, the mother is a rock to them throughout their life, that really reliable source, that place they can always come home to. And, and if everything is wonderful in the, in the life, and ideally, the child is a rock to the parent, somebody that they can always look to as a second source of strength and help. Yeah, as you know, I still call my mom when I need help with something. <laughs> Boy, don't you ever. <laughs> well, happy Mother's Day. Thanks, Dad. <laughs>